We've got to pick who we want. We can be selective in who we want. Uh, but if there's people at our club that are good enough, we'll have them. Kenny Dalglish has money to spend and he's smiling again at football matches these days, which is something of a miracle when you think about that astonishing resignation from Liverpool in February last year. Disillusion with the game in which he'd been outstanding as both a player and a manager. But only a few months later, after endless rounds of recreational golf, he was enticed back to the game by Blackburn Rovers, one of the 12 founder members of the league. A sleeping giant with an immense heritage and what now seems to be an exciting future ahead. When Dalglish took over just a year ago, he was promised almost an open checkbook by the club's benefactor, Jack Walker, the ninth richest man in Britain who made his millions in the steel industry. The first priority was promotion to the new Premier League. And they looked odds on to achieve that until a dismal late run meant they only just squeezed into the playoffs. They'd failed at that stage three times previously and only just achieved their ambition in the most dramatic of manners. This could be the moment Blackburn have been waiting for. With an injury time at the end of the first half, by Gilder against Carl Bundleton. Gilder is gone! Blackburn Rovers back among the elite for the first time since 1966 and now looking forward to adding more silverware to their splendid boardroom. Dalglish is spending Walker's millions carefully and he's fully appreciative of the financial backing that he's getting. The managers are appointed and, and they're told there's no money. They say, well, how can they improve it? It's for the money but not having any money. The morning about us having some money. Uh, but the guy who's a benefactor has done a tremendous job for black money. We thought that. They, they'd never been in this position. Um, so initially the finance was made available by Jack Walker, which everybody totally appreciates. But he made his, he's made his, his money being sensible and shrewd, and he'll not be held to ransom over anybody other than transfer fees or wages. a far cry from Blackburn's rather humble but incredibly successful infancy. They were always known as a cup side, winning the trophy five times in eight years before the turn of the century, and incredibly three times in a row before the Football League was founded in 1888. They won the league for the very first time in 1912, and again two years later, but they have never been in a better position to win that title again until this season. Jack Walker only acquired a controlling interest in the club last year, and now his two passions are football and flying. He owns Jersey European Airways. But before Walker's arrival, Blackburn's last successful era was the late 50s, early 60s, when the now sugar daddy was just a fan on the terraces, and his two favourite players were Ronnie Clayton and Brian Douglas. In fact, Douglas remembers Walker in those days only too well. He's always been a winner, as Jack. Uh, I didn't know him that well, but I know he's always a winner. I've... I remember sort of um, <clears throat> doing a card game, a little card trick on him and winning, I won, uh, ended up him having to pay me 50p, it was 10 bob in those days, and uh, that was about half past two one afternoon, and I couldn't get away from him, I, we played a variety of other games, darts, dominoes, you name it, and it ended up, I ended up in the local golf club playing snooker, uh, he beat me at snooker to get his you know, until he got his money back, and then he was he allowed me to go home. Every club's out looking for a miracle man, and we've got Jack Walker. Uh, I'm sure every club would want to want Jack Walker back in them. And I'm sorry that a lot of clubs won't be able to do that. But we're so fortunate because it's made such a tremendous uh, difference to Blackburn itself, to the town itself. I've never known for a long time that Blackburn's been buzzing. Everybody's talking about it. You can go out of town and it's all Blackburn Rovers and Jack Walker and, and uh, all this. Th Every week something's different going on. They're either buying a new player or they're getting a new stand or they're doing something else. And it's been a, an absolutely wonderful year. The last time the town was this excited was in 1960 when Rovers met Wolves in the cup final, an occasion that ended in disappointment. I know Brian let me, 
for the first time three months ago, I asked him could I borrow the uh, the video of it, and uh, I had a look, and I couldn't believe that uh, that was the type of game it was. Wembley for the big match, and about a hundred thousand people there to see it. But first, the ceremonial. Blackburn Rovers in track suits come out with Wolverhampton Wanderers for their formal presentation to His Royal Highness the Duke of Gloucester. Cup final tradition is maintained. Then, with the ball on the spot, there's something of an innovation. The exchange of banners between Bill Slater Wolves and Ronnie Clayton. Rovers in half shirts kick off, and in good cricket weather, the star football match is on. Wolves' forward line was soon in action with Dealey, Stobart and Murray featuring in a good movement. Then across from Flowers sent Stobart away. In came his perfect centre and it was a goal. It was an own goal by McGrath, in fact. Soon after this, Dave Whelan was in collision and was seriously injured. What shocking luck. There was no substitutes in those days. With um, Dave Whelan breaking his leg and... and I know for a fact that uh, Derek Dugan wasn't fit. So we're really down to nine men. Nine, my, nine men at, at Wembley, you've no chance. Two minutes, the centre from Horn gave Dealey the chance he wanted. 2-0. Smother from Dealey. Oh, that's taunted. That's a lot. True enough. And soon Bill Slater was leading his pack along to collect cup and medals. Back in their dressing room, Ronnie Clayton, Blackburn skipper, made a point of congratulations. Fair enough. I'm a loser's medal somewhere at all, but somewhere. I never look at it. No, I've never, I've at never it. seen it. I've never seen it. Isn't it funny? There's only, you, you only remember winners. For the most part, Blackburn have been winners this season, and the Dalgleish signing who's made more impact than any other is Alan Shearer, a £3 million man worth his weight in gold. I'm not going to tell my weaknesses in case there's any defenders watching out there. Strength. Um, I don't know. I, I, I hopefully like get my um, fair share of goals every season. Um, I would never say I was a prolific goal scorer. Um, hopefully the lads will vouch for me and say that I bring other players into the game and I work very hard. He's a super fella. He's a, a lovely lad, so he is. Um, what's amazed me more so than anything else is that he's, he's only just turned 22 there, but he's very, very mature, both on and off the field. And um, as you say, for to hold the price tag of 3.3 or 3.5, whatever it was, you know, he, he bears it very lightly indeed. His attitude to scoring goals is like, in my time, Brian Clough, if you will. And Brian Clough was a different type of player, but um, his attitude to scoring goals is that that I mean, he he's just one thing on his mind. That's I, I don't think he's a lad that you will be picking a ball up and going past players. I mean, he he does with strength. But not with trickery, I don't think. But he, he looks to me a great finisher. And let's face it, Brian, he's only 22. Yeah. His attitude is fabulous. He is. He, he, he's even a hard tackler, you know, he, and he doesn't shirk anything. Now, this is, for me, a good-born uh, centre-forward, if you can call it, a, a, a striker. I, I, I think he's a very, very good player. And when he gets to a mature age of about 27 or something, It'd be even better stuff. I mean, he scored his second goal um, for England, and I don't think he got enough credit for it because if you watch him from behind, he changes sides. We uh, were blown in bad defending, and the guy was sort of had his eye on Alan uh, seconds before, but he sort of changed and went on the other side of him and uh, met the ball perfectly for me uh, to score that goal. Shearer may be the jewel in Dalgleish's crown, but Dalgleish himself was the magnet who attracted the big names to Ewood Park. I know one of the big plus factors in myself coming here was the fact that Kenny Dalgleish was here. And obviously with the club so, showing so much ambition to get back in the Premier League, because I still felt at the time when I left Aston Villa last season, I had a couple of good years left him in, in the first division. It certainly helped, yeah, because he's, I mean, he's so experienced, he's, he's certainly done it in, in his playing days and he's certainly done it in his, in his management days as well and it can only be good and it can only rub off on me. We had to have 
along with Jack Walker, I think, a figurehead. And, and Kenny, no bigger guy at the moment in the game than people like Kenny Daglage. And uh, what I've seen so far bears that, that out. Uh, players have come, and I'm sure that there's lots more changes going to take place over the over the next few few years, as long as Jack Walker is, is involved with the club. And I think that Kenny Daglage will be here for some time yet. And and with his knowledge and now uh, his uh, expertise, uh, he knows what he wants. I'm sure that uh, at the end of the day, um, some sort of trophies are going to come this way to, to this town. If I never spent another penny and we could be successful, there would be nobody more happy than myself. It's a nice position to be in that you can go and improve your side if you've got the financial available. But it's very difficult to improve your side with the, without finance. And saying that, everybody is. is played for us so far has given us everything they've got and you can't ask for any more from them. Blackburn's form on the field has meant an explosion of interest in the club. 11 o'clock last Saturday and this isn't the cue for that afternoon's game against QPR but for the away game at Liverpool on the 13th of December. Dalgleish has returned to Anfield. At Ewood Park, commercial manager Ken Beamish wants the club to retain its personal touch. I think we pride ourselves in the, in the fact that we are a homely club. We are very approachable from the top down and uh, we mustn't lose that. That, is a, a, always, that has always been part of Blackburn Rovers and uh, we mustn't lose it regardless of how busy we, come, we become. Blackburn Rovers, Julie speaking. <laughs> Merchandise um, that has uh, troubled its uh, takings from what we have at the moment is a shop counter, what I term a shop counter. Um, we've reached a stage now where uh, we've had to take on shop manager. That is one area that's uh, that's a, a, the increase has created the post. We seem to be inundated now with requests for autograph football, autograph shirts. Um, obviously we can't accommodate the demand because of the, because of the volume but it, it, that's another area where we are doing a lot more PR work uh, than we've, we've done in our past. The fact that Mr Walker is uh, helping the club in to the extent he is uh, does not change the uh, targets for the commercial department or the football club as a whole. Uh, it, it is on a long-term basis, uh, a target to break even and run it as a successful business and a profitable is business. So the only thing that's going on in Blackmore at the moment is um, football at Ewood Park. Um, but that can only be good for the, for the area and for all the kids coming through in the schools playing football. And, but like you say, the, the only talk in, in Blackburn at the moment is about um, Blackburn Rovers. It's always nice to have a club with tradition and um, Blackburn has possibly next best to any of the clubs about. And, um, uh, I find that, you know, for the future and all that, you have fans now flocking back here that possibly haven't been to Ewood in a long, long time and they're recalling the old days and the glory days and not, not, not only that, but they're looking to the future then as well. So, who knows? I know that uh, in uh, Jack Walker, he wants the best things here for the club and I know, knowing Kenny Douglas is the manager and the player, he'll want the best as well for Blackburn Rovers. So, um, it's very early yet to say, but cer certainly uh, the club here is aiming very high. To watch the match now, are you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah but Good. You don't like Queen's Park Rangers. You don't like Queen's Park Rangers? I don't like Queen's Park Rangers. Yeah. <laughs> I like Blackburn. Do you? Yeah. yeah. And who's your, fa who's your favourite okay. player? Alan Sheehan. Alan Sheehan. Yeah. Is it? Best goalie, Bobby Mims. <laughs> <laughs> Ronnie Clayton, still a hero for kids who never saw him play. An England international in the days of the maximum wage, a far cry from the multi million pound world of Alan Shearer. But the club remains the same. It's not really changed that much, other than the fact there are more people coming now, of course. But, uh, I mean, there was a buzz in the town when I played here, and it was a great place to be. It's a very friendly, homely club, nestled up here in the Pennines, and uh, they make you feel very much at home. It was a, an enjoyable experience to actually play for Blackburn Rovers, and it, 
it came at a great time for me at the end of my career. And it was something that I look back on with a great deal of fondness and I can appreciate what the players today feel about the setup. It's it is a big club, but it's in a small town and people are saying, Well, isn't it marvellous, you know, that we've got people of this ilk that are standing up there with the big city clubs. I don't see them out of the title chips at all. I mean, all right, fair enough, they've not scored so many goals in the last four or five games. But there again, it's becoming a bit like playing against Manchester United. It's becoming everybody's cup tie now when they're playing at Blackburn and they're coming here. Let's see the setup. Players up and down the country um, are obviously keen to actually come to the club if their name's linked with Blackburn Rovers. I think that's wonderful for the club and wonderful for the town. Blackburn was certainly looking to get back to winning ways against QPR. They hadn't won in the league since their 7-1 thrashing of leaders Norwich two months ago. The loss of form coinciding with Shearer's torrent of goals drying up. If I'd have carried on scoring at the rate I was I was doing so, I would have ended up with 70 or 80 goals this season. I think that is uh, rather impossible. But um, yeah, the goals were bound to dry up sometime, but um, I'm big enough and strong enough to um, to cope with that. And I think it's five games I've not scored for now, and hopefully they'll, be come, they'll come back soon. Well, Shearer's quest for goals almost finished before it began. A crushing tackle by Darren Peacock left him hobbling gingerly after only three minutes. But there was still plenty of action for Ronnie Clayton and Brian Douglas to get excited about. If only they could have got on the pitch to do something about it. Oh, good ball. Get it across. See it. Good on lucky there, really. nil at half time so plenty of food for thought for Ronnie and Brian as downstairs in the boardroom the fires were being stoked and the best half time tea in the whole Premier League was ready and waiting for the mad rush good job there's a 50 minute half time these days you need that if you're going to enjoy fully your favorite cake and a quick cup of Rosie Lee Shearer's ankle is the main topic of discussion but Norwich are 2-1 ahead at Villa and Arsenal a goal down to Manchester United so three points here wouldn't do Blackburn any harm at all. Out into the cold then for part two. And Shearer's second half, in fact, lasting only two minutes. Better to rest the ankle and let Roy Wegley have a go at his former teammates. Mm. 
beat himself. Beat him if you can. Oh, he's got past him. He should have smashed it. Hell, he just ended up with his foot out on it, then. I don't, I don't know really how far he was out. So. It's only about seven yards, it must have been. The terribleness, that. Jeez. That's right. Good job the referee was there. He was five yards offside. Yeah. Even more than that. Boy, you were so free. So, a good win for Blackburn. Jack Walker taking a rest in Honolulu would have been pleased. So, what odds for the title now, Mr Dalgleish? It's more points than anyone else. Uh, and if we get that, then we'll win it. Oh. You going out today, are you? Yes, we're going to the golf club for dinner and dance. What do you think we could have had again, Doug? Do you think we should have won, or...? Oh, I think we thoroughly really deserve to win, but we made it hard work in the end, didn't we? Really? Yeah, totally. The good old days of Clayton and Douglas are back. A real Rovers return.